You came to me with a gun. You call it righteousness. Call it by its right name. Murder. Have Gun. Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of the man called Paladin. Oh, oh Miss Wong. Oh, Mr. Paladin. I'm I... sorry I frightened oh. you, didn't I? Yes, sir. I was going to knock on your door, and all of a sudden, you come out. <laughs> oh, you surprised me, Mr. Wong. Well, you're making the rounds a little early this morning, aren't you? Lisa, many extra rooms to be cleaned for new guests. Big convention for railroad men begins today. Oh, that's right. That's I'd forgotten. Right. Looks like I'll miss all the excitement. Where are you going, Mr. Paladin? To Greenwood. Oh, is that a long way from San Francisco? No, not far. It's about 30 miles. Well, then maybe you come back before convention ends. Uh, Miss Wong, if it's like that last convention we had at the Carlton, I'd just as soon stay away until it's over. Oh, it's a... Miss Wong, remember, plenty noisy, huh? <laughs> I'll say it was. I'll say it was. Oh, me. Miss Wong, remember something else, too. What's that? They make plenty big mess in rooms. Yeah, I'll bet. I'll bet. Well, that stage will be leaving in a few minutes. I better get downstairs. Now, don't work too hard, Miss Wong. Yes, sir. You have a nice trip, Mr. Paladin. Thank you. For some years now, we've been asking you to send your dollars to care to help the hungry and needy overseas. Here's what some of those dollars have done. They have bought milk and sterilization equipment so that 100,000 school children in Israel can have a glass of milk every day. Thanks to this equipment, Israel is now providing its own milk for these children so the next care dollars can go to help another needy area. Your care dollars have sent medical instruments and laboratory equipment to a new small hospital being built in the Philippines. This hospital will bring the first medical care to this area in centuries. Care dollars have furnished farm tools, building machinery, cotton cloth, and other needs so that refugees in Vietnam could erect 27 villages. But there's much more to be done and many more people to be helped in all parts of the world. Won't you continue to help? Won't you continue to send your dollars to CARE, New York 16, New York? It had been two years since I had seen Clem Brady, the sheriff of Greenwood. Now he was asking for my help. His letter seemed urgent. I welcomed the opportunity to renew his friendship and to get away from San Francisco for a few days. Clem wasn't in his office when I arrived, so I went over to the local dining room for a late midday meal and a cup of coffee. The place was empty, except for a young couple sitting on the other side of the room. A rather unusual couple. The girl the most strikingly beautiful young lady I'd ever seen. My admiration must have been fairly obvious, for at one point she returned an embarrassed smile. This prompted her escort to step over to my table. Hey, you. Yes? Keep your eyes off my girl. I... I suppose I was staring, but no harm intended. You're new here, ain't you? That's right. Well, let me warn you. Don't be flirting with her again. I wasn't flirting. Call it what you like. Just remember what I said. Now you look, mister. I... Hey, Clem, Clem Brady. Oh, are you? They told me you were by the office. What's going on here? Oh, this young man and I were just having a friendly conversation. It looked to me like he was about to tear at each other's throat. What's the matter, Sam? Nothing, Sheriff. Nothing at all. I didn't know he was a friend of yours. Uh, just a misunderstanding, Clem. I was admiring the young lady over there, and he got the wrong impression. Sam, I've told you time and again, you're going to get yourself in a pack of trouble if you don't stop being so hard-nosed jealous. you got to be careful, boy. Yeah, I, uh, 
I guess I was in the wrong again, Sheriff. Sorry. Remember what I say, Sam. That boy protects her like a bandy rooster. Maybe he's got a good reason. She's quite a beauty. Ain't she, though? Hmm. Well, sit down, Clem. Have a cup of coffee with me. Yeah, might as well. We'll get you a cup if that waiter ever comes out of the kitchen. Oh, he'll be out. Well, it sure is good to see you, Paladin. I didn't know whether you'd be able to come or not. Why not? About time we met up again. Bye, Sheriff. Hello, Sheriff Clem. Uh, hello, Martha Nell. My, my, my. She is a charmer. Yeah. It's pitiful, though. Pitiful? Well, she's part of the reason I asked you to come up here. How's that? It was her husband that was killed. Oh? Not more than six weeks ago. Just a boy, Paladin, barely turned 20. Sure set this town on its haunches. Oh, I got pressures all around me to clear this up. How did it happen? Well, the boy had been gambling at the saloon. He'd won a lot of money and left the table around midnight. He was ambushed in an alley about a block away. Robbed? Yeah. Poor kid was from back east. Him and Martha Nell had just been here a couple of months. So far, there hasn't been one lead I could nail down. Ah. What about the men who lost money to him that night? Well, every one of them has a good alibi. Well, maybe it was a stranger passing through, saw the boy winning, and then waited for him to leave. Uh, I don't think so. We don't have many visitors in this town, especially on a Monday night. And that's when it happened. Now, I'm sure it was somebody right here in town. Do you think he's still here? Well, nobody's left town or acted suspicious or anything. How'd the girl take him? Pretty bad at first, but Sam's been a lot of help to her. Yeah, how does he figure in this? Well, he'd known her husband back east. He's the only one they knew when they came out to settle here. After the killing, he sort of took charge. He's done a good job of it, too. From the looks of things, he'll probably end up getting married. Uh, Sam's a nice boy, except he's a little hot-headed. Where do I start, Clem? Well, the main thing is to get to know the people that was in the saloon that night. Maybe with a fresh mind on it, you might discover something I've overlooked. Hmm. Was the boy in the habit of gambling? No, that's just it. It was the first time anyone ever knew of him visiting the saloon. Martha Nell can tell you about that. Uh, then I should go have a talk with her first. That's a good idea. She works over at the general store. Right. Well, if I'm going to have a cup of coffee with you, I'd better go in the kitchen and get it myself. Thank you, Martha Nell. Bye. Bye. I'm sorry she took so long, Mr. Paladin. No, it's all right. Now, uh, I've forgotten the last question you asked. Yes, you were going to tell me why your husband went to the saloon that night. Yes, well, it was kind of a celebration for Roy. He'd gotten his first paycheck from the freight office, and I'd just gotten my job here at the store. It seemed that everything was beginning to come our way. He and Sam came by for me when the store closed, and the three of us went over to the dining room. Roy bought us the biggest steak suppers on the menu. Your husband worked with Sam at the freight office? Yes, uh, Sam got him the job there. Oh. What happened after supper? Well, Roy wanted to buy Sam a celebration drink, so they took me back to the rooming house and left to go to the saloon. That's the last time I saw Roy alive. Why didn't Sam come home with him? Roy was having such good luck at the gaming tables, he didn't want to leave. So Sam came on back to the rooming house. Well, does he live at the same place you do? Uh, he did then. He had the room across the hall from ours. Uh -huh. When he came back, he knocked on my door and told me Roy'd be home later. It wasn't more than an hour after that when Sheriff Clem came and told me what had happened. Oh, Sam. Hi. Uh, you got off early? Yeah. Thought maybe we could take a ride out to Willow Grove. All right, but you'll have to wait till we close. I have to lock up tonight. You, um, uh, buying up the store, Mr. Paladin? <laughs> Sam. Well, he's been in here long enough. <laughs> Do you keep tabs on everybody who comes into this store, Sam? There ain't much going on in Greenwood that I don't know about. Especially when it concerns Martha Nell. Sam, Mr. Paladin was just asking me some questions about Roy's murder. He's helping Sheriff Clem. Look, Paladin, Sheriff knows as much about this as Martha Nell does. Now you let him give you all the answers. 
There's no need for you to get her all upset. It's better she forget about this whole thing. I don't mind answering questions, Sam, if it'll help them find the killer. I know what's best for you. Just let me handle it. Oh, Sam. You may be right, Martha Nell. I guess I did take up quite a bit of your time. I, I didn't mind, really, Mr. Bell. Well, thanks, anyway. Perhaps I'll be seeing you again before I leave town. Good day. Goodbye. Try new king-size Philip Morris Commanders. New because the tobacco in them is vacuum cleaned. And the cleaner the tobacco, the better it tastes. Yes, the cleaner the tobacco, the better it tastes. Philip Morris Commanders are made by a new kind of machine, the Mark 8, that takes rich, full-flavored tobacco and first... (laughs) gently vacuum cleans it, then rolls the cigarette fully, evenly, cuts the ends clean and firm. The result is new Philip Morris Commanders with the cleanest tobacco ever rolled in a cigarette. Try a pack. You'll get a full, round, king size of solid smoking pleasure because the cleaner the tobacco, the better it tastes. Noticeably better. Have a commander. Welcome aboard. I spent the first two days in Greenwood getting acquainted with the men who had been at the poker table with Martha Nell's husband the night he was killed. As far as I could determine, Sheriff Brady was right. They all had good alibis. And they were all anxious to help us find the man who did it. I also spent a couple of hours each night in the saloon, talking to the regulars and to the barkeep. No, sir, Mr. Paladin. If there'd been a stranger in here that night, I'd have remembered... Strangers stick out like sore thumbs in this town. Care for another drink? Uh, no, no, thank you. Uh, has there been any suspicious rumors about who could have done it? Not that I've heard. Uh. Oh, Paladin. Hi. Hello, Clem. Where you been all day? Out in the countryside, talking to some of the men who were in here that night. Care for a drink, Sheriff? Yeah. Uh, make it rye, Barney. Yes, sir. What'd you find out? Mm, same thing you did. Nothing new. Yeah, it's a tough one, all right. Sure. Oh, thanks. Yep. Clem, yeah. let me ask you something. We've been going on the basis that he was killed for the money. A robbery. Now, could there have been any other reason? Well, he was robbed. Yeah, I know. I know. But did he, did he have a run-in with anybody? No, or no, was no, no, no. He, he was just a newcomer. Uh-huh. Like I told you, him and his wife had only been here a couple of months. Uh-huh. Just happy little lovebirds trying to get a start in life. Uh, it was robbery, pure and simple. <laughs> Tell me more about this boy, Sam. Would, would he have any reason? Not likely. He was Roy's best friend. I know, but he's also pretty cozy with Roy's wife now that he's dead. Well, I suppose you could make something out of that if you wanted to. But it's a natural thing to happen. I'll admit it crossed my mind at one time, but don't forget he was in bed when it happened. How can you be sure? When I went over to give Martha Nell the bad news, he came out of his room across the hall. Yeah? Said he heard the commotion. Now, he'd been in bed all right. Did she also tell you that he stopped by earlier to tell her that Roy was still at the saloon? She did. And that was proof enough to eliminate him when it did cross my mind. Ah, uh, well... Hmm. It's been a long day, Clem. I think I'll go back to the hotel and get some sleep. All right, Palin. I... I'm going to stay here for one more drink, and I'll be doing the same. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good night. What are you... Somebody took a shot at me. They ran down that alleyway. Uh, a couple of you men look down there. See if you can find anybody. Uh, you hurt bad? No, I don't think so. Can you walk up to your room? Yeah, sure. Uh, somebody go get the doctor. Tell him to meet us at the hotel. Okay, sure. Let me give you a hand, Paladin. All right.
Oh, well, there you are, mister. That ought to do it. Uh, thanks, doctor. Hey, you keep your arm in that sling for a few days. You'll be all right. Good. <clears throat> uh, Clem, did your men find anybody? Uh, no. Not a soul. That's too bad. Well, good night, gentlemen. Night, doctor. Night, doctor. You come by the office tomorrow, Mr. Paladin. I'd like to take another look at your arm. I'll do that, doctor. Thank you. Well, Clem, whoever shot me could very well be the same man we're looking for. Yeah, but I can't figure out what they'd have against you. Well, maybe I've asked a few too many questions the last couple of days. But you don't have any ideas? Nope. Well, I'll let you get some rest. Maybe we'll come up with something in the morning. I'll give it a lot of thought. Good night. Good night, Clem. Here, let me turn up the light. No, uh, leave it low. Someone may see us. It's kind of late for you to be out alone, isn't it? Well, I heard what happened. I wanted to see if you were all right. Well, I was very thoughtful, but uh, that isn't the only reason you came, is it? Well, what do you mean? You want to tell me about Sam, don't you? Well, yes, I guess I should. You've been covering for him. He's the one that killed your husband. How did you know? Why haven't you told the sheriff, Martha, now? I've been too afraid, Wait I Wait a minute. Guess. Did someone follow you here? Not that I know of. Why? There's somebody outside my door. Sam. Get over behind that chest. Don't open the door, Mr. Paladin. Huh? Keep quiet. Don't open the door. You give me that gun. Don't move or I'll shoot. Come in. Sheriff! Watch it, Clem. Get down. <laughs> you all right, Clem? Yeah. Hey, what's going on in here? Well, Martha Nell pulled a gun on me. Martha Nell. I'm not a very good shot. If you were... You would have killed me tonight in the alley. That was you, wasn't it? Yes. Martha Nell. Yes, it was me, Sheriff. I killed Roy, too. What? Yes, I killed Roy. Then I took his money to make it look like he was robbed. Well, but, but why? Roy would never let me leave him. It was the only way I could have Sam. Does Sam know? No. When he came back that night and went to his room, I, I slipped out and waited till Roy left the saloon. Everything worked out just as I hoped it would until you came into town and started stirring things up again. I wish you hadn't done that, Mr. Paladin. Well, Go get the doctor. Ah, uh, it's too late, Clem. She's dead. Oh, no. What a pity. Yeah. God, I, I can't believe a pretty little thing like that would shoot her own husband. Why would she do it? Like she said, she was in love with Sam. Uh, just doesn't make sense. Love can do strange things, Clem. Especially to a young girl like her. Oh, oh, oh. Here we are, Miss Paladin. Ah, 
Thank you, driver. Yes, sir. My pleasure. Good day. Oh, Mr. Paladin. Well, hello, hey boy. Hey boy, I wonder when you come back. Here, I take your suitcase. Thank you. Oh, oh why you got sling on your arm? Oh, just a little accident, nothing serious. Oh, that's good. Uh, you come home just in time. Oh, in time for what? To miss a big railroad convention. Everybody left <laughs> last night. Hey, boy, that's the best news I've had all week. Yes, uh, I thought you'd be happy to know. How's Miss Wong holding up? Oh, not so good. She not come to work today. All tired out. <laughs> but uh, she'll be back tomorrow. I warned her not to work too hard. Hey, boy, take my suitcase up to the room, will you please? I'm going to stop in the bar and get a drink. My throat's a little dusty. Yes, uh, oh, oh, uh, Miss Paladin. What, what, what? Uh, there's a very pretty young lady in there. She tell hey boy, she like to meet you sometime. Maybe you have a drink with her? Oh, how pretty? Oh, very pretty and very young. You'll see her. Well, hey boy, this may come as a surprise to you. But today, I'm not interested in the very pretty and the very young. If you're having Thanksgiving at your house this year, with loads of relatives expected, then make double certain you pick up a pack or two of Sylvania Blue Dot flash bulbs when you're out doing your big Thanksgiving grocery shopping. Pictures taken with Sylvania Blue Dots will help make this Thanksgiving a day to remember forever. And don't forget, only with flash do you get all the sharp, clear details, day or night, anytime, anywhere, with any camera. And incidentally, right now, your dealer is making this special offer. With the purchase of just a pack of Sylvania Blue Dot flash bulbs, the world's largest selling brand, you'll get a lavishly illustrated 32-page flash guidebook called It's Easy to Take Better Flash Pictures, loaded with helpful hints and tips, suggestions and secrets of expert photographers. This book shows you the right flash bulb for every kind of film. Yes, this book will help you take the best Thanksgiving pictures you've ever taken. So hurry, Thanksgiving is this Thursday. Get your Sylvania Blue Dot flash bulbs now. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hey Boy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Mr. Paris. Featured in the cast were Jack Moyles, Sam Edwards, Charlie Lung, Bartlett Robinson, and Ann Whitfield. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. Have Gun, Will Travel.